Please help me, Lord. Ha <laughs> <laughs> yeah. ha! Yeah. yeah, the green, so sick and the beat, uh. Some the beats in the week, baby, uh. You know what it do, uh. You know what it is, uh. But we knew what it was, baby. That green, yeah, yeah, uh. I'm on a journey, me. He was great, yet humble. He was completely original. He was a superman of Yoruba rap. He was that green. That green until his death in 2010 was the ultimate rapper. His rhyming skills were top notch. He was a good songwriter. There are rappers out there who have amazing rhyme skills but can't write a great song. That green could and very often did. He was creative. He could weave a hard stopping narrative with precision. He was was real honest and was from the streets yet still managed to cut across borders and have major commercial appeal his story began in the maternity ward of the lagos university teaching hospital in the mid 80s that green was born as the first child of his mother and fourth of his father his mother was his father's second of three wives being born into a polygamous family life was never rosy for Olaito. family and financial issues meant that that green grew up in different parts of lagos lagos island suleri and okoba all at different points in his life represented where home was Probably influenced by the family issues and the streets, that Green became a stubborn and very disobedient child. One of my sisters bought me a PlayStation, you know, PS1. And later, when we used to play the game, and one day, my sister asked me to come around to Abuja to come and stay for like, um, chill with her for like two, three months. And, I, and that Green said, I wanted to pack the game and take it to Abuja, and that Green told me, Leave the game now. Let me play game now. Uh, you want me to just be bored or something? And unfortunately, when I I, I I can't stay there for like two months, so I had to come back in like two, three weeks. So you wouldn't believe when I came back, that game sold my game. And that game sold my game. And I asked him, how about the game? He told me, I'm not going to it. I'm game going to learn it. I'm going to and that was just the day in the life of that green. He hustled in computer village, collected people's phones and sold them to others. He swindled people, collected his mother's money. He did so many bad things. He was very bad, but music changed his life. <laughs> The first time we took notice of that green was in YQ's Ephemile. Watching the video for Ephemile, you see the hunger in the young artists during their performance and their eager anticipation to blow. When that video went viral, that Green already had an album out. It was titled Still on the Matter, released in 2006, and it came and went without any impact. The promotion was poor, the rap audience then was not big, and to make matters worse, it was in Yoruba. But he was not deterred. He caught our attention on a female and he used that together with his determination and talent to make a second album which turned out to be much more successful. The sophomore album was titled Chief Executive Omota and surely it was a hit. He's one of those people that make me understand music is not fun. Music is not just because you wanted to be on the TV. Music is all about your passion. Soon, Da Green had become a household name. Da Green came and he just took over because Da Green had this command over people. He built his fan base and stuff like that. And today, I can still say Da Green has a very strong fan base. I'm one of them as well. 
and you know when you listen to that green songs they still sound like reset songs as well so you know that shows the quality of music that he made back then and they still reflect on it today his songs went the distance and soon all artists wanted to work with him let's go back to the roots i want to go back to the roots let's take it back to the roots africans He also made what went on to become a very special appearance on cool DJ Jimmy Jad's freestyle session on Jimmy's Jump Off. His freestyle was top notch and as a result went viral. Yeah. Uh, yo, but the mother they wanna kill a day, kill a day, kill him fess up today. Mill him fair, we mill him up fair, mill him fess up today. Tryna get some pure wool, tryna get some deal, lots of fish your woods. Tryna wanna grow up more midgy, yo, yeah, this how we're living, yo. Multi back control, deck I set for bro. La la yi, I do my work, love, love, with caro. I'm a top of my mo, leg, but top one, go valet, go go bazero, go monk, go to my music, and talk back control. Dad Green had the ego of a true hip hop star. When asked once what he felt about fellow rapper Lord of Ajasa, he replied by saying that they are both pioneers of indigenous rap and added that if anyone wanted to listen to This Is Rap Music, which was the name of Lord of Ajasa's album, he should buy the Lord of Ajasa's album. But if anyone wanted to listen to real rap music, then he or she should listen to the CEO album. The Green is a very friendly person. Most of everyone is in a good mood. If you're in a good mood, um, everything goes easy. well. Um, so if you take that brain and then run, enter this joint, flow on this thing. Um, give him 30 minutes. 30 minutes. He was asked to play back, play back, play back, and then he shit. He's flow and that's it. But when he's not in a good mood, when he's not in a good mood, can you hear that? That is him right there. So when he's not in a good mood, He's not a violent person. He used to walk away from, even if something is not right, he just walk away. Most, there's something I realized that he doesn't really like, he hates oppression. Like Green will tell you the way it is. He will tell you the way it is without giving concern, without giving a damn about who you are. He will tell you his mind. He's very blunt. He's one of the realest dudes I've ever met in this business he is um, as real as an MF. He's just too real. He's gonna tell you, he's gonna call it speed a speed anytime. He doesn't hide his feelings. He's a very, very open and true again. Oh sorry, sending but he's a very open person. Um, that's one thing about him. But just as the ego had spread its wings to soar in his glory, his journey came to an end. On the 13th of April 2010, Dark Green left his home in Sunshine Estate to attend to a family emergency and for the video shoot that he had been paid 50,000 naira to appear in. On his way back home in the early hours of April 14, 2010, Dark Green drove his two weeks old car, a Nissan Maxima 2008 model, into a parked lorry in front of Alakara police station, Mushi. He was rushed to the Taishulari Hospital in Mushi before getting transferred to the Lagos University Teaching Hospital, Idi Araba. There were rumors that he was making major recovery, but then in the evening of the 22nd of April 2010, that ring gave up the ghost. He died in the same hospital where he was born. Rap had lost a blossoming soldier, his fans mourned and the world was stunned. His planned US tour set for a few weeks after his death, his plan to drop his next album in 2011, his plan to become a king, all his plans became just plans and were never fulfilled because the man that promised those things was no more. I'm gonna miss my friend, my boy, young blood, and every day that I wake, I think of all the legacy you left. Thank God, your music will continue to the 
but five years later his legacy still lives on Dagrin's death inspired a whole lot of rappers to hit the studio spitting in their native dialects whether he pioneered Yoruba rap or not the likes of Olamide, Tipsy, Jibo, Seriki and CDQ were majorly influenced by Barack O'Grin um, that guy really inspired everybody most especially me he inspired us he's um um, he's very courageous, determined, and he believes in himself so much. He's talented and he's dope. He's lyrically crazy. He redefined the indigenous music, the indigenous rap music. He take it to another level where, where people really want to pay. You know, before people want to listen and have fun. But now, he rebranded the and he want to pay to listen to that green. So that was why today now the legacy is being there already. So everybody's just coming doing the yoga thing. Because the acceptance, you know, it's struggle hard to, to generate the fans, you know, accepting that kind of music. But he achieved it, but so painful that it's no more. Well now the whole yoga thing is going far and wide. Yeah, definitely. When that green was doing his thing then I wasn't I wasn't known as much as I am known now, but yeah, he definitely influenced me in a way because he was doing the old Yoruba rap thing, so I picked up a couple of things from him. Whether not five years, five decades or five days, that green, you will always live on in our hearts. I want to do this million percent. I mean to beg God Almighty to keep him in where the angels are, which is allusion of the house. God Almighty protect me also. I could not release songs, I could not do so many, so I have to do the fans. I love you, Dagrin. I love you, fans. Keep supporting Dagrin music. Keep supporting Conga music. We love you all, Nigeria, for all the support. I'm a very good friend of Dagrin before he passed on. I mean, I met him in 2007 when I was rolling there with them MI. I was pretty much younger, rolling with MI, Ice Springs, then, then I was doing Western rap. So Dagrin actually played a very vital role in my life. He made me start rapping in Yoruba. Be like, say, yo, you've got a very good bounce on beats, and you've got a very good tone. I like your delivery and every time you're in the studio. But what do you think if you rap in Yoruba and your local dialect, you communicate easier with your fans? I mean, other than rapping in English, I mean, if you want to listen, listen to English rap, you can as well get Jay Z or get 50 Cent. That's what he told me then. It's been five years since you're gone, but we still they remember you, we still love you. God bless you, that green. God bless your soul. And we here, we still keeping it real. Ibile, Ijile, Latte Kodi, Kwale, like he said, Ijile. The crew will bless. But big ups to him, man. I hope he's so he's still resting in peace wherever he is. Like much respect, much, much respect for that guy, much respect. One thing I know about this old Dagrin issue is it's been five years, and even after five years, we've not seen anybody to occupy that spot. That space is still him till today because there's nobody who could actually fill in into that space of that brain. Rest in peace of it. R.I.P. Lyrical Weary. R.I.P. Barack Green. R.I.P. Dark Green. We go meet again.